Okay, here's another uh, another item in for a pair. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. I believe it's the 4 gigabyte model. And this is the old Rev, so this is the first Rev with the USB-C problem. I picked this up on eBay for £16, which is, I think, a decent price. There was no fault given. They just said that it doesn't work. When I apply power to it, you can see that there's nothing, no LEDs flashed, nothing. It is essentially dead. I have connected power and I've probed some of the points with my multimeter and it doesn't look like there's any power actually getting to Raspberry Pi itself. So on close inspection, looking inside the USB port, which I know you can't see because of this camera is not the best in the world, but if you look inside the USB, uh, I'll try and take a picture and splice it in, but anyway, one of the pins on the USB-C port is up, is bent back and touching the top frame. So it looks to me that the USB port is defective. So I went out and I bought some replacements. So we're going to fit them now and see if we can get a working Raspberry Pi 4, which would be nice. Okay, so I've got the Raspberry Pi masked up with a bit of this just aluminum foil tape just to protect some of the components from the heat. I've got it on my preheater, the preheater here set to 1 AE. Can't really show you because this camera's fixed. Switch on the hot air workstation. Probably go about 330 on the heat. And I'm gonna remove this. Sorry about the angle. Again, it's the best I can do with the, set, the current setup, so... Suck out the pads quick. But I've only got two power points, so. Let's turn that off for a second. Okay, now I'm gonna just wick those holes out just so the. Just so we can lay the flatter in there. compare the the one I bought to the one I ordered and apart from being a bit melted on the old broken one it looks good to me and I can definitely confirm I don't think you can see but I can definitely see that the damaged one is definitely damaged so fitting this new one should fix it Hmm. 
wondering if I should hand solder it. Actually, one of those holes isn't cleaned out yet perfectly, so we'll just try again. to clean out. Take the new one. I'll fit the new one. Alright. Let's turn all the noisy stuff back on. Okay. I probably could have wicked that down and put leaded solder on there as well just to make my life a little easier, but we'll see how we go. And take putting this back up, putting a new one on, my temperature just dropped down to about 240. See, we can have a 240. I don't want to go too hot because I just don't want to melt the new connector. And once the solder liquefies gravity should pull that connector down. So I'm just looking for the connectors to drop. And I believe they've dropped. It's a bit hard to tell because it's not a lot of visible pad. I'm going to call that good, just let it cool down for a couple of seconds and then we'll give it a poke and see if it's still stuck or not. Okay, so poking that I can see that it's hopefully solid. So we're just going to tack a bit of solder into these holes that we wicked out. Quick. I'm just going to do the front two for now because if it's not soldered the back, at least this way I can still counter lever it down if I have to. All right. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Okay, after a bit of playing around, I did actually manage to get it to work, which is good. I did notice that I burned the corner of the PCB where there was no copper to protect it, but I'm happy with that because the unit works and powers up absolutely fine. Thank you for watching.